and it's a good morning from me. It's a wonderful September, mid-September morning, um, 2014, and I've just travelled in <coughs> out from Cumber, <coughs> um, out towards Mahie Island, and technically it's not an island at all. Uh, it's a it's just a, a, a little, it looks like an island, but it's connected uh, with a narrow uh, roadway and a bit of farmland. And I've passed by um, Castle Espy uh, Wildlife uh, Centre, brilliant place to uh, come for lunch or anything like that, and see the birds. And I've also passed by um, the old schoolhouse or the schoolhouse as it's now known and I'm out at Mahi and I'm looking uh, across Strangford Lock and uh, Curly is calling there. This is a wonderful uh, wildlife haven. It's absolutely amazing. So I've brought the binoculars with me as well and I'm looking out towards uh, Mahi Golf Club and I've come to uh, pay a wee visit to Nandrum Monastic Site. Now this down in front of me, uh, that lump of rocks there out on the shoreline is the remains of a tidal mill. Um, the mill was powered by the tide coming in and the tide going out apparently and I think actually they even trapped, uh, they had fish traps here. Um, they've possibly discovered those uh, just in the foreshore as well. This is Nandrum Monastic site. Uh, it's a brilliant place if you want to get your head charred uh, and on a sunny day it's even better. Uh, let's just pop over to the uh, notice board here uh, placed by the Northern Ireland Environment Agency. So there we have a wee map, and there is the uh, the the structure of a uh, Nandrum monastic site. There's, um, as you can see, there's a number of circles, and there's a round tower, or the remains of there's the remains of a church, and there's all sorts of different enclosures, school. Uh, there's a sundial up here somewhere, there's hut foundations and this was a major major centre in and around the 5th, 6th, 7th century. Um, around the best surviving example of an early medieval monastery, Nandrum's days were between the 7th and the 10th centuries, great days. Right, okay. And there's a wee bit about its history. There's a bit about the enclosures, the archaeology, the mills, um, the church at Nandrum was founded by St. Maka, Mako, in an associate of St. Patrick in the 5th century. And there's uh, actually a picture of how it might have been. There's the round tower and the circles, uh, stone circles, and the cashels in between, three stone, stone circles. A reconstruction of a tenth, the 10th century church, uh, and there's another uh, 3D viewpoint of uh, how it might have looked. The uh, the iron handbell with copper alloy coating was found in 1922 and it's, uh, I think it's in the Ulster Museum. And there's a wee picture, a reconstruction of the first tide mill at Nendrum, 619 AD. I think this is fantastic. Let's go and have a wee look. And I've just come across this second notice board detailing the tide mill. And it says it's the first the first mill is currently the earliest known tide mill in the world. So there you are now. Granite millstones. Uh, there's a 
and there's where it was, straight in front of me. The water gushed in uh, at the right hand side there. Right onward and upward, and you can see the uh, the, the different uh, stone walls and and uh, the, these areas in between the stone walls would have been uh, probably built up on huts and whatnot, and we're coming up again to another stone circle with ruins in behind. Terrific viewpoint, there's, there's Scrabble way away in the distance there and it's an idyllic setting this. It's absolutely marvellous. Imagine all the monks tending gardens and orchards and goats and sheep and whatever was grazing in the surrounding fields, making honey probably. Let's go over to this notice board to have a wee look. of a 10th century uh, round tower, um, probably built in the 10th century at the same time as the stone church. It was these ruins uh, that allowed William Reeves to rediscover and identify Nandrum in 1844. Uh, the tower was originally about 90 feet could be seen over a wide area. It's just a pity that it ain't there anymore. And there's the inners of the tower for you. But let's see what is lying about the place and the view. Uh, there you see in the distance the uh, the old light ship. The, the, it's sort of painted orange and we're looking down towards Daft Eddies. So we're almost surrounded by water here. And this is, uh, I believe, the remains of the, the old church. There's a graveyard here too, and there was a monastic school and whatnot, so it was very advanced for its, uh, for its time. over there working on the wall. What's this say here? Uh, this says monastic grave. A boat yard across the the water. central enclosure, you're now standing in the spiritual core of the monastery where church graves and round tower are situated. Okay. Oh, I missed the sundial. Silly me. Let's go back. There is the sundial. I was looking for that but I couldn't see it. And it's been sort of partially uh, 
reconstructed from the various fragments that have been found and plastered in. Uh, I think this dates from about the 9th or 10th century. An old sundial. Uh, no digital watches in those days. Here's the remains of the round tower. Brilliant. Right. Let's go further and admire the view. And you can see uh, why this was such a, a brilliant spot to be. It uh, was a high defensive point, so it attracted a lot of uh, villagers and whatnot into the surrounding area. It was, uh, let's see what those are, wee birds there. And whenever the rest of the country was covered in forest, this would have been uh, a brilliant lookout post uh, and you would have been able to get to it by coming in by sea. In fact, down at the mill there, you'd have probably be able to uh, land a boat. And there's the remains of old uh, outbuildings and what have you. What do I say? Here's another wee, wee visual. The middle enclosure. We are now in the main working and living area of the monastery, so there you go. And view of the eastern side, the, work, the round houses in the southwest sector were used as workshops and the rectangular building was known as a school. So, you can actually see this better uh, from the air, but we're not in the air, so that's the way it goes. There are some uh, aerial videos of Nandrum which actually show it that wee bit better. And another another outer wall here. Uh, plenty of plenty of blackberries. So uh, bird population around here is just absolutely unbelievable in the, in the winter time of course you get all the brant geese and whatnot coming in so here we have Nandrum in all its glory and does attract quite a few uh, visitors because it's just an idyllic spot okay there you are now and I've just found another couple of notice boards uh, detailing the wildlife of the area. And I've got uh, a wee picture of siskin. I have never seen a siskin here. <laughs> but, but then they are extremely hard to spot. Uh, I've seen sh shell duck. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of foxes about the place. Uh, peewits or lapwings, plenty of them, and then in the winter time the light-bellied uh, brant goose. I'd love to see a siskin or two. Uh, they're very, very... I've seen them once in the back garden, or once or twice in the back garden, but they're 
the, the devil's own job to uh, to spot or to come across and then we have the old peregrine falcon who flies in from uh, the cave hill and we've got the black-tailed godwit black-tailed godwit and we've got a teal coming in here too and then the sea aster for those interested in uh, plants and I'm sure there's plenty of other things I mean and this is a wee, uh, wee centre that they have here let's go down and see if it's open but I don't think it is opening hours uh, I know it's it'll not be open So coming down the hill from Nandrum and you can see what the boys in the environment department of the environment have to contend with because these uh, these walls bulge and then they all fall down or else kids climb on them and uh, well what can you do with kids kids will explore so coming back down the uh, towards the pathway to the gate here absolutely gorgeous setting and uh, I would love to go back in time and see for myself just uh, how this place was run of course it uh, would have come under Presumably it would have come under attack from uh, the old Viking raiders who were very keen to uh, steal cows and women and anything else they could lay their hands on, no doubt. Uh, and this is why Strangford Lock is called Strangford Lock. It comes from the Norwegian Strang, strong. Uh, strong forward, strong look. So there you have it. Nandrum monastic site. Come and see it for yourselves, why don't you? I wish I owned some of the big houses around here. It's absolutely wonderful. Some of the creations that people have built. Anyway, Onward and upward.